Good afternoon and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we are looking at Bordetella Haemophilus legionella. So Bordetella pertussis is the only organism with major clinical significance within this genus. This causes whooping cough and infants in young children. There's a closely related organism right, such as uh, B. paraperitusis, which can also cause a milder, milder form of bronchitis. So B. bronchoceptus, another member of the is a causative agent of respiratory diseases in cats and swine, but can cause bronchopulmonary symptoms in severely immunosuppressed individuals. So looking at the morphology and physiology, right, so this is an extremely small, strictly aerobic, gram-negative, non-motile, and it's a short log, a cortobacillus. So compared to other Bordetella species, B. pertussis does not grow on common laboratory media and, cannot, and can be distinguished from B. pertussis, and that B. pertussis is also is positive, but U. is negative, while B. pertussis is also is negative, U. is positive. So B. bronchoceptus is positive for both enzymes. So look at the epidemiology and symptoms. So most of the patients are whipping cough for less than a year old or older children may also get the disease. The severity of the disease is also age related. The organism contained in aerosol droplets gains access via inhalation and colonizes the bronchial ciliary epithelial cell. After a week to 10 days of incubation period, mild symptoms of rhinitis, mild cough can occur, which lasts one to two weeks. Further proliferation of the organism comprises ciliary function and is accompanied by increased frequency and intensity of symptoms. This leads to a paroxysmal stage characterized by proxisms of cough, followed by prolonged and distressing and inspiratory gasps to a whip. The cough which occurs at very wet intervals and occurs every few minutes can last for two or three weeks. When interferes with oral intake and the swallowed mucus can induce vomiting, resulting in severe hydration and weight loss. Hypoxia also occurs during prolonged attacks due to seizure, hypoxia, encephalopathy or coma. So the cough's episode slowly decreases over and there is gradual recovery with 3 to 16 weeks, known as a covalent change. The pneumonia due to PB produces other bacterial pathogens, otitis media, rectal prolapse, and meningitis encephalitis are among the secondary complications. So with regards to pathogenesis, so the symptoms are due to many factors. So as well as attachment to and growth of serrated cells, the organism produces a number of exotoxins which contribute to these symptoms. So it's a pertussis toxin. So this is an illegal peptide AB type exotoxin that is a major cause of pertussis abnormal cough. So this causes T-cell lymphocytosis as well as as having adjuvant properties. It also causes hypoglycemia, increased IgE synthesis and increased histamine, as well as endotoxin sensitivity. The organism inhibits many leukocyte functions including chemotaxis, phagocytosis and respiratory burst and impairs natural killer cell killing. It also contributes to the bacterial binding to silated epithelial cells. It exerts many of its effects by covalent addition of ADB ribose to the GTP binding GI protein and thereby preventing the deactivation of adenylate cyclase. This results in the accumulation of large amounts of CAMP cyclin adenosine monophosphate, which leads to increased mucus secretion and interferes with many cellular functions. Now let's have a look at the adenylate cyclate toxin. So this exotoxin penetrates the whole cell, is activated by calmodulin and catalyzes the conversion of ATP to CAMP. Like pertussisidin, it inhibits phagocytes and NT cell functions. However, in contrast with pertussisidin, the CAMP increase caused by this toxin is short-lived. You also have tracheocytotoxin. This is a peptidoglycan-like molecule which binds to silated epithelial cells, thus interfering with ciliary movement. In higher concentrations, it causes silated epithelial extrusion and destruction. The destruction of these cells contributes to pertussis. You also have demonocratic toxin, which is a very strong vasoconstrictor and causes ischemia and extravasation of leukocytes and in association with tracheocytotoxin, which causes necrosis of the tracheal tissue. You have filamental hemagglutinins. And these are not exotoxins, but are filament-associated lipo or legosaccharides, which are implicated in the binding of the organism to silated epithelial cells. Antibodies across against these molecules are protective, probably by preventing bacterial attachment. Looking at lipopolysaccharide, so like LPS of other gram-negative bacteria, these endotoxins cause a number of pathophysiological effects. When released in, released in relatively large quantities following bacterial cell lysis, they cause irreversible shock and cardiovascular collapse. 
In smaller quantities, deactivate a variety of inflammatory mediators, TNF, IL-1, IL-6, prostaglandins, etc., and generate complement activation products. So, looking at a diagnosis now, so laboratory diagnosis is made by obtaining a nasopharyngeal aspirate and a primary culture on Baudet Gengu medium, which is known as potato glycerol blood agar. Growth is inhibited by peptones, unsaturated fatty acids, sulfides, which are found in the Audrey media. The organism grows in small transparent hemolytic colonies. It can be serologically distinguished from beta pipetusis and beta bronchoseptis. I now look at the prevention and treatment. A killed whole bacterial vaccine is normally administered as DPT combination. An acellular vaccine consisting of filamentous hemoglutinins and detoxified pentaturian is also available as recommended for booster shots. Erythromycin is currently the drug of choice for treatment. We are now going to look at Haemophilus. So the genus Haemophilus contains many species, but Haemophilus influenzae is the most common pathogen. Other species of Haemophilus that are of clinical importance to immunocompetent humans are H. Ducreae, which causes cancroid on STD, with an STD, Haemophilus influenzae aegyptis, which is associated with conjunctivitis and Brazilian preparate fever, and Haemophilus palaemphilusiae, a layer cause of pneumonia and endocarditis. There are several species of Haemophilus that are normal flora but may be pathogenic immunocompromised hosts. The capillated stain of H. influenzae type B is the most virulent, although some encapsulated non typable stains are also pathogenic. The first one I mentioned previously, influenza haemophilus, is a small gram-negative bacillus which can be grown on chocolate agar, which is heated blood, and requires heman factor X and nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide NAD factor 5 for growth, which is enhanced by high carbon dioxide concentration 5%. It does not grow on normal blood agar. The factor 5 and factor X requirement can be used to distinguish between H. influenzae, which requires both, H. parainfluenzae, which requires factor 5 only, and H. ducrae, which requires factor X only. Remember, these are, these are the stuff of the clotting mechanisms. These influenzae are also divided into several stains on the basis of capsular polysaccharides, E2F, or the absence of a capsule non capable. Here the epidemiology and symptoms of H influenzae. This causes a variety of clinical symptoms, some of which may depend on the presence of a bacterial capsule. So, until the availability of the HIV vaccine, the type B H influenzae was the main cause of meningitis in children between six months. In five years, although older children, adolescents, and adults can also be infected. The infection normally causes a runny, runny nose, low grade fever, and headache for one to three days. Due to its invasive nature, the organism enters the circulation and crosses the blood brain barrier, resulting in a rapidly progressing meningitis, stiff neck, convulsions, coma, and death. Timely treatment can prevent coma and death, but the patient may still suffer from. Deafness and mental retardation. Type B influenzae may also cause septic arthritis, conjunctivitis, cellulitis, and epidrolitis, the latter which results in obstruction of the upper airway and suffocation. H influenzae of other types that may rarely cause some of the symptoms listed above. So, non typical stains of H influenzae are the second commonest cause of otitis media in young children. But it's second to septicotic pneumonia. In adults, these organisms cause pneumonia, particularly in individuals with underlying pulmonary infections, and these organisms also cause acute or chronic sinusitis in individuals of all ages. The pathogenesis of this is not exactly known, but the presence of the capsule, which is antiphagocytic, is a major factor in virulence. Type BH influenzae are more invasive and pathogenic than other stains. The lipopolysaccharide is responsible for the inflammatory process. The organisms also produce IgA1 specific protease which may aid the mucosal colonization. So presumptive diagnosis is based on history, physical examination and symptoms. Blood cultures are positive in more than 50% 50 50 of symptomatic patients such as an ARB except those with conjunctivitis. Polydipital phosphate PRP, a component of the MT capsular polysaccharide is present in the serum, cerebrospinal fluid and concentrated urine in more than 95% of H. influenzae B meningitis cases mainly found in dairy. Gram-negative cortobacilli can be found in the CSF in more than 80% of meningitis cases. Some grand stain preparations may be useful in rapid diagnosis of septic arthritis and lower respiratory diseases. However, if you live in a mountain area, such as areas like dairy, that won't help you. 
Unless prompt treatment is initiated, HM influenza, B meningitis and epiglottitis are almost 100% fatal. Due to common resistance to ampicillin and some resistance to chlorimethacinitol, cephalosporin, which penetrates the blood-brain barrier, is the antibiotic of choice in these cases. Other diseases caused by this organism can be treated with ampicillin if, if it's susceptible, or choice of trimethylpropin, sulfamethylfazazole, tetracycline, etc. HIBC vaccine, which consists of sapular, capsular PRP conjugated to tetanus toxoid, has been used successfully to provide protection and is part of the recommended routine vaccination schedule. This is a significant cause of genital ulcers, crancoid in Asia and Africa, but is seen less commonly in the United States. The incidence is approximately 4,000 to 5,000 per year with clusters found in California, Florida, Georgia and New York. The infection is asymptomatic in women, but about a but following a week, about, but following a week after sexual transmission to a man, it causes appearance of a tender papule with ephraimitis based on the genitalia or the peripheral area. The lesion progresses to become a painful ulcer with inguinal lymphadenopathy. The H. decline lesion crancoid is distinguished from a cephalic lesion chancre and that is comparatively soft lesion. The organism is more fastidious than HM influenza, which can be grown on chocolate agar, seeded blood, supplemented with isobutyl X and 5 to 10% carbon dioxide atmosphere, and the growth can be detected in 2 to 4 days. Another species, Haemophilus influenzae aegyptis. This bacterium, previously known as H. aegyptis, causes an opportunistic organism which can result in a fulminant pediatric disease known as Brazilian purpuric fever, characterised by an initial conjunctivitis followed by an acute, acute onset of fever, as well as vomiting and abdominal pain. Subsequently, this is also a patient developing potentia purpura shock and can also result in death. The growth conditions for this organism are the same as those for H. influenzae. But, so both decrae and H. influenzae aegyptis can also be treated with erythromycin. Now let's move on to something called Legionella pneumophilia, right? So this is another organism. So this is a newly described pathogen, right? So after an outbreak of pneumonia was occurred at a convention in Philadelphia. So the disease is subsequently referred to as Legionnaire's disease. So this is another another flu-like form of disease is referred to as Pontiacic fever. So Legionella pneumophilia is now recognised as a ubiquitous aquatic saprophyte which causes epidemics and sporadic infections. The organisms are spread via aerosols and, and no person-to-person -person transmission has previously been reported. Legionella are facultate intracellular pathogens which stain poorly as gram-negative rods. So the causative agent has not been recognised previously since it does not grow on conventional agar such as sheep blood agar. So these days, L-Numophilia is cultured on medium that contains iron and cysteine which are vital for growth, such as charcoal yeast extract agar. However, primary isolation is still difficult from clinical specimens. So, organisms of clinical importance. After recognition of the unique culture characteristics, a large number of other species of Legionella were isolated from environmental clinical samples. These organisms are occasional causes of human disease, and the vast bulk of Legionellasis is caused by Legionella hemophilia and most are serial group 1 and 6. The second most common cause of pneumonia is Legionella midididae. This organism also stains weakly, fast, weakly acid fast on primary isolation but loses its property in vitro. This does not mean it is any way related to mycobacteria. Legionella are poorly staining gram negative rods which are identified by growth from buffered charcoal yeast extract and require L-cysteine and iron for growth. These organisms are fairly slow growing, requiring 3 to 7 days at 35 degrees. Pollinies are small with a ground glass appearance. There are four tests for the identification of Legionnaire's disease, and that is culture, urine antigen, paired serology, and direct fluorescent antibody stain. So PCR tests for L-neumophilia and clinical specimens are available. However, the Centre for Disease Control does not recommend routine use of genetic probes or PCR for detection and clinical samples. So, Legionella pneumophilia is an organism that resides in the environment and pools of standing water worldwide. It is found as an intercellular agent within protozoa and a component of biofilms. 
Legionnaires' disease is recognized as a sporadic infection, often associated with travel and epidemic disease of community have acquired pneumonia and a nosocomial infection. It often infects hot water towers and air conditioning systems. When found in buildings, antibacterial treatment of the water supply is recommended. So another source recently identified as water using car windscreen washers if the reservoir is being warmed by the car engine. So using windscreen washer which contains fluid which contains methanol solves this problem. The organism is, trans is transmitted in contaminated air but not spread person to person. Legionellosis is listed as one of the nationally notified diseases by the Centers for Disease Control. So finally, we're nearing the end of the presentation. Legionella present as two distinct clinical diseases. The first is Legionnaire's disease, a typical pneumonia for an incubation period of two to ten days. Mortality rate is as low as 20% for healthy free individuals and as high as 75 for immune compromised white people. Legionnaire's disease is treated with erythromycin. The second form of disease presentation is pontiatic fever. This illness has an incubation period of one to two days and is self-limiting with flu-like symptoms and no reported mortality. Pathogenesis of Legionella species requires the organism to be phytocytosed into monocytes via complement receptors. Once inside the monocytes, the bacteria prevent phytolysosome fusion like dairy and proceed to replicate until they lyse the phytosome, which leads to apoptosis of monocyte and release of bacteria. Human immunity has little effect and the sensitized T helper TH1 cells are required to activate the infected cells. Interferon gamma is also critical to the elimination of Legionella. That's the end of the video today. I hope you enjoy it. Please continue to watch. There will be more interesting topics we're going over. Thank you very much. See you later. Bye bye.